Hey, welcome guys. In this video, we're doing a review of the MacBook Air released in late 2018. So the screen is a 13.3 inch retina display with resolution of 2560 by 1600. Apple says there are 48% more colors than the previous version, but there's no touchscreen option. I have to say it does look certainly better than the previous MacBook Air model. And I also have to say that macOS does a much better job of handling scaling at this resolution than Windows 10 does, which does a pretty poor job beyond 1080p. Viewing angles are great, it doesn't matter which angle you're at, it's pretty clear. Colors are fantastic and it's a pleasure to have such a great screen. However, on such a small display, even 1080p would have been fine and looked amazing, like the Dell XPS 13. A review of that laptop, you can find a link in the video description. And the only reason I say this is because more pixels means more battery being used up, but we'll talk about the battery later on. The screen is also easily susceptible to glare and reflections, so using it outdoors wouldn't be a great experience. The screen brightness levels are a tad bit dark, and to have it viewable means to increase the brightness quite a significant amount, closer to about 75% at minimum. Thankfully, the MacBook Air has finally caught up with the times and has much smaller bezels. As expected of the Air lineup, it weighs only 2.75 pounds and is 15.6 millimeters thick, which is incredibly thin. It's certainly an attractive laptop and looks very familiar to the MacBook Pro and is the first MacBook made with 100% recycled aluminum. It comes in three colors, space gray, gold, or silver. Now the specs of my version is 1.6 gigahertz dual core, eight gen Intel Core i5 processor, eight gigs of DDR3 RAM, 120 gig SSD, an integrated Intel UHD Graphics 617, which is $1,200 Canadian. And that's disappointing as it's only $100 cheaper than the base MacBook Pro model. And the $100 price difference is pretty much the same thing down south of the border in the US. I'm not sure why they increased the price this much on this MacBook Air model, but it is a bit disappointing. It is available in different specs, the highest spec version being the same processor, 16 gigs of RAM, and 1.5 terabytes of SSC storage for $2,600, which is a ripoff, so don't get the max spec version. It also supports Wi Fi 802.11 AC and Bluetooth. You can have a wired Ethernet connection, but only with a USB C adapter. The power cord is a 30 watt USB C charger, measures at 7 feet long, whereas the old MacBook Air charger had an additional optional extender cord that let it reach almost 12 feet in length whereas this current model doesn't have that. And back of the old model charger, it also had cable management bracket, which again, this model charger doesn't have that. On the body of the Mac, it has two Thunderbolt ports, which is also USB-C on the left side. And over on the right side is only a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Now I know the MacBook Air is meant to be lightweight and thin, but it would have been nice if they had one single USB-A port as not everyone is ready to switch over to USB-C just yet. And it's the regular MacBook that is primarily designed to be the super thin MacBook out of all the different options available. The weight distribution seems to be pretty even between the screen and the base as the hinges aren't too tight and it's easy to open the screen with one hand. Flexing backwards is decent but I've seen better on other laptops but this isn't a big deal. Thanks to the aluminum parts in the body, the screen is very sturdy and it's not that easy to flex or bend in case someone nudges it by accident. So what you guys are seeing is actually the front facing camera being used right now and it's incredibly blurry and hazy. It makes my beard look more of a grizzly mess than it actually is and make me look more of a hobo than I actually am, although I'm kind of a bum. The point is, Apple has stated on their website that this is an HD camera. Technically on paper you can make it HD, it could be 720p but that doesn't mean the quality is going to be good. In fact, it's actually really horrible. Cell phones from about 2004 that I had performed about the same. And overall, the quality is incredibly poor, especially considering that the lighting in here is fantastic. There's just a really grainy mess. The picture is still really dark for some reason. You're better off using your current cell phone for video conferencing. Speaker performance is outstanding, greatly increased from the previous model. Even at max volume, the sound doesn't crack and it remains crystal clear. And here's a sound sample. One of the things that helps is that the speakers are next to the keyboard and are facing up, so straight at the user. I was always a fan of the previous generation's keyboard, but it's even better in this version with Apple's butterfly mechanism. Included in the keyboard is LED backlighting, which is kind of standard, and typing is incredibly quiet. Let's take a listen.
Included is a Touch ID button, which unlocks the laptop incredibly quick and is located near the top right of the keyboard. This isn't a big deal, but the trackpad is oddly huge, which Apple claims is better for use of multi-finger gesture, but this much space isn't necessary. And as expected of a MacBook, the touchpad is one of the best you'll find in the laptop industry, as it's extremely sensitive and responsive to your commands. When it comes to processor performance, I could run some benchmarking tools, but the score results wouldn't mean much to the average user. Instead, let's compare my gaming desktop, which I also use to edit my YouTube videos, to this laptop. Now, my gaming desktop has a quad-core i7-4790K, 4GHz processor, 32 gigs of RAM, and a GTX 1080 graphic card. The MacBook Air has a dual-core i5-1.6GHz processor, integrated UHD 617, and 8 gigs of RAM. Now, I do understand this is not a fair comparison, but just hear me out for a moment, as this will answer a lot of people's questions. When working on YouTube videos, I create smaller proxy files since to edit the raw video files are just too large to edit. Now, I use the same file on both the MacBook Air and my gaming desktop. On my desktop, I created the proxy files in 4 minutes, whereas on the MacBook Air, I created it in 24 minutes. Now, when exporting the final video in its final form, it was a 4K, 60 frames a second, MP4 file. The desktop was able to get that video exported in 19 minutes, while the Air finished it in 74 minutes. Now the lesson here I wanted to emphasize is don't use this as a video editing laptop, especially with 4K content, it's not going to work that great. Now while exporting and converting, it was the only time I ever heard the fan turn on and it still remained pretty silent. Let's take a listen. The laptop never got hot during this time with the exporting or conversion, instead it just got a little warm. Graphics is a weak point since it does have integrated graphics. So the game was running was Rise of the Tomb Raider and it could just barely function at 800 by 600 resolution, but it looks incredibly terrible. So I bumped it up to 720p, which you guys are seeing right now, and it stutters and drops in frame rate a lot. The long story short is that this laptop isn't meant to game on or edit videos. Running web browsers, Office 2019, watching 4K videos, running Spotify all simultaneously, and other just general use works just fine and is incredibly fast at that. The battery is supposed to be one of the key selling points of the MacBook Air lineup. Now Apple claims 12 hours of use on a single charge, but I never got that performance once. It makes you wonder how little strain they put on the laptop. The fine print on Apple's website says they visited 25 popular websites, but which websites? And are those websites dark? Do they have dark themes? Because visiting bright colored websites will drain the battery faster because it's more colors being used on the screen. I'm not saying the performance is bad, but I never got close to what they said when using it in real world, just like a normal person would, like you, watching this video. While using Office 2019, a little bit of YouTube watching and using Chrome, I average about five and a half hours, but Chrome is a battery hog. Doing the exact same thing with Office 2019, watching YouTube videos, and using Safari, instead I average a whopping 10 hours 43 minutes. And all this testing was done with multiple battery drains and testing, and those are the numbers I averaged. And the average recharge time I got from 1% to 100% was about 2 hours and 15 minutes. There are a few screws at the bottom that can be used to open up the laptop, but I wouldn't recommend it as Apple designs their hardware to be difficult to fix on your own or to upgrade. And if you mess something out, they're not going to really want to help you out, even with a warranty. For the most part, I'm incredibly pleased and stoked that Apple finally refreshed the MacBook Air lineup, but there are some negative points here. The first being is that price tag. The MacBook Air is supposed to be one of the cheaper MacBooks available, but it's just $100 cheaper than the Pro version at the base model. It makes you wonder which one should you go for, the more power or the more of the battery life. The webcam is extremely horrible and horrendous. You're honestly better off using your cell phone. So let's put it this way, if you're gonna use it for general day-to-day -day use, or if you're a student and you need a laptop that'll last you pretty much the entire day, this is definitely a good option. So I hope you guys found this video useful. Be sure to check out my social links in the video description. Hit that like button, it does help. Subscribe and thanks for watching.